All right, all right. All right, I think we're rolling now. I think we're good to go. Fantastic. What are we going to talk about tonight? Man, I'm not 100% sure what we're going to talk about tonight. I was hoping we'd leave it to you. If I had my druthers, I thought maybe, just maybe, we might talk about uh, maybe getting people in the door, some marketing techniques, and uh, whether or not maybe filming your adjustment should be a part of that. <laughs> you like to stir the pot, sir. I love it. I got a big spoon, baby. A big spoon. Ah, uh, you and me both. I understand. You know, um, I think that's a good idea because I think a lot of folks – end up, you know, opening, you know, the kind of the big joke in my experience with opening my practice was thinking, you know, I can walk in, hang a big fat shingle and people are just going to be lined up. But yep. unfortunately, that's not really the way it went down, you know, and I worked for another guy for the first year and he basically was like, get your butt out there, go do something. And I said, do what? Like I had zero idea that you had to get out and advertise and market yourself and, and kind of figure this whole that's a whole part of the system that you didn't, you didn't get taught. Like you were just taught to be a good clinician. Uh, you know, I went to Logan where it was where I call it Logan medical school because you're taught to be a <laughs> medical doctor, um, yep. that or Logan penitentiary, one of the two, because, um, <laughs> you're taught to be fantastic with, you know, learning how to, to diagnose and, and do all these things that you then get a license for. And you have yeah. no business really doing frankly, but you know, I think there's things that, um, you know, with getting new patients, Reggie Gold always used to say, you know, they, you know, new patients come from old patients. And I, and I love that because people are going to refer in, but that takes some time to get that ball rolling. It takes some time to build it. And, and you know, you're mentioning Logan, whenever we went to Parker, one of the selling points that Parker really, at least whenever I went, tried to sell their prospective students on was that we have a business class that we offer. <laughs> and yeah. The business class was basically, these are the codes you use to bill insurance, mm -hmm. and these are your diagnosis codes, and these are your treatment codes, and this is how you do that. And, I mean, they also, you know, talked a little bit about uh, setting up a, uh, uh, what's it called, a business plan, and, and they didn't really talk – it was all 20,000 foot view stuff. It wasn't anything real, real specific. And we had a little communications class that I've referenced before on this show, but it was, you know, you're not prepared for that. And I mean, we had people say, well, now if you think you're just going to go out there and hang a shingle and people are just going to roll in, think again. And that's true. And there's a ton of different strategies that people use to get folks in the door. And some of them work, some of them don't. Some give you good quality leads, some give you poor quality leads. And I think it'd be beneficial to discuss some of that. Um, it kind of ties in with what we what, what kind of ties in with what we talked about last week when we talked about your dream practice. What does that look like? Yeah, and yeah. It, I think it'll dovetail real nice with that. Perfect. So, um, you know, I think I got a D in that class because you know <laughs> the uh, the famous saying like D is for doctor, right? When you're in chiropractic that's right, school, baby. sometimes that's so true. Um, but yeah, I remember turning in that business plan and getting a D and thinking fantastic move next class right like because that's <laughs> you're not going to learn what you need to learn from that kind of stuff that's kind of a joke um so let's see when i first started i kind of took that same concept when i was at my, the first practice and i kind of started doing it in that practice and uh that concept was um you know wait sit and wait my wife worked with me and we kind of twiddled our thumbs at each other going what, what what now you know and and how does this work and you know i think part of it was getting out into the community a little bit and going to things that i absolutely despise today so you know to do it all over again and i moved to a new town i i would you kind of have to like go to some of these things like the BNI meetings and at least get to know some people and, and let your, you know, kind of be out in the community. So I think that is important. I think some of us are better at shaking hands and, and, uh, kissing on babies than others. And, you know, if maybe that's if or you're shaking more, babies and kissing hands, either way. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's frowned upon though. Um, they don't like that. That's not a practice no. builder guys. Don't, don't do that. No, don't that's, do that. That's, one thing that we do, though, um, when people come into the office now and they like they refer out, we like to kind of reward those folks, you know, like it's starting brand new and I had nobody. I would definitely be out letting people know we exist. Um, and I would also um, use social media to your benefit. But, you know, one thing, you know, we, we kind of had some conversation on this past week was, you know, filming your adjustments. And honestly, I have no problem with it because I feel like um, – you're, you can't hide the truth. You know, I, I want to give people what they what they want to see. I don't want to 
have a curtain in front of it and say, well, you know, I'm going to sell you the sizzle, but the steaks later, you know, and I, I think that's, you know, I like, I know that's a kind of a famous saying is sell the sizzle. And I get that, but talking head videos are kind of boring just, and I, and those are just those videos people do where they're just standing in front of the camera and they're telling you all about chiropractic philosophy. But until you see it, you don't really know what's going on. And frankly, I think there are, um, you know, I, I kind of went to one side of that conversation and stuck by it pretty hard. But if I leaned a little bit the other direction, I would say um, sometimes people put out videos. that are a little bit scary. And frankly, yeah. from the scary side of things, like if I was a patient watching it, I think I might be a little bit scared at times watching some videos. So, I think in, in the right context, if it's done properly and people see what's going on and they, they understand what's what's happening, you know, that you're not just twisting babies' necks and putting fingers in their eyes and, you know, all this kind of crazy <laughs> stuff that they that people see when you watch these videos, uh, or, you know, they, they start crying and stuff, you know. So, you know, it's 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 not it's not the same as like having it done properly, you know, and if it's done right and it's done professionally, I think it makes a big difference versus, you know, uh having some of the videos that are just creepy to watch, you know? So I think you're exactly spot on with it, man. It's, I think in general, as a general rule, it's a good idea to avoid doing it, but there are definitely moments and instances where it can be beneficial. And I think one of the problems we get into in the profession is, is we tend to look at things through a black and white lens. We don't really give things the nuance they deserve. And there are a lot of things that are out there. It's it's not black and white. It's not stark. There's a lot of gray area in a lot of ways and in a lot of places that we really don't give credence to. And I think filming adjustments is one of those. But one of the things that you said, the key word behind filming an adjustment is context. Context is everything. If you take a video of you know someone doing a Gonstead style seated cervical, it's gonna look you know someone's instantly gonna make the association with those old school kung fu videos, you know, where the ninja sneaks up behind the guy and just absolutely Wah! yes, correct snaps his neck, Wah! You right? Know? And, and like you're saying, some of them can be scary and some of them can be off putting. Now, I don't think that we should cower in the shadows because we're afraid we might scare one person out of a hundred. Because no matter what you do, you're never going to please everybody. And the people that are going to be afraid of chiropractors will be afraid of chiropractors no matter what type of video you put out until they come and experience it for themselves. I mean, right. you've seen people and I've seen people countless times that were terrified. Oh, get my neck cracked. Well, you're in for a treat because we're not going to crack your neck. We're going to adjust your spine. You're going to love it. Trust me. Lay down. Let's get this going. But right. the point being, and the you, video. Oh, the, go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead, bro. Well, so I was talking to um, Jim Chester. I don't know if you're familiar with Jim or not, but I know Jim. Hey, yeah. Jim. Love so you, uh, I think we're going to get him on the podcast one night, man. He um, nice. He did a, a couple movies. Uh, Cairo. Uh, I can't remember the first one, um, but Chiropractic. Uh, it's called Patient Project or Project Patient. I'm sorry, and it's you know basically a documentary uh, from the patient perspective, and it's going to you know tell like how how does a patient perceive it and like what's going on, and I think that. Uh, when people see that and they can relate to something like that and, you know, whether it's, you know, and, I, and you and I and everyone listening hopefully knows that this isn't really about, you know, neck pain, back pain, headaches, but it's about your life. And when we Absolutely. look at that, you know, a lot of life is in inner. It doesn't work well when someone's in bed with migraines all week, you know, and they can't make it to the kids yes. soccer game and they can't do the things they want to do. So I think it is important that people understand that, you know, like that, that is what life is, is, you know, obviously not having those things, but at the same time, you know, building it up to a point where people understand, you know, it's it, from the patient perspective, that's, that's the kind of video I think people need to understand is how does my life improve with this? Well, and it's like Tim said, you know, we focus, we don't focus on what's wrong with you. We focus on what's right with you and we make that better. And whenever that's better, what's wrong with you goes away. Um, and I, I think that's a good way of looking at it. And that's an effective way that videoing can be used. But if you take a snippet where it's just the adjustment itself without any context behind it, well, you're, I mean, that's, that's going to be scary to some people. It really is. It can be really off putting. Um, yeah. That video of the baby being adjusted in Australia, I guarantee you nobody knew what was going on. No. And the people that watched that video and were freaked out by it have no idea. I mean, 
People are like, you mean you hold a baby upside down by its feet? That's just so barbaric. I'm like, the baby just spent like the last three and a half months in the womb upside down. Right. And and you're going to think it's a big deal to hold them like that? You're, they're checking a primitive reflex to determine, you know, atlas rotation or atlas laterality. That's that's par for the course. That's something we learn. Right. But, to, you know, to the uninitiated, oh, my goodness, it's so barbaric. But then you take another video on the flip side of that where you have that young boy. You probably remember this in 2016 or 2017. It, it went viral. Mm-hmm. Yeah, excuse me. There was this kid in Indonesia or New Zealand, somewhere down there in the South Pacific, who was pulling on a root or was picking up a tire. I don't remember the story. And he hurt his back, and he's got this terrible antalgic lean. He's walking forward looking like a human question mark. And he goes and sees his chiropractor, and the dude's a Gonstead guy. You can tell he's a Gonstead guy. He has a Gonstead chair in his practice. He's got a Gonstead bench. He sets the kid, the kid up on. He does that you know, Gonstead kick pull where you hook the spinous and put – the leg on his leg and kick it and he tells him you're going to hear some popping you're going to feel some pressure and the dude lights him up he sends him in the low earth orbit right right but it and you know it's like oh my goodness it's scary but but what that video provided that the video of the baby being adjusted in australia didn't provide was context right it told a story it told a narrative in which the adjustment was part of the story and in doing so, I think that's that's an effective way it can be approached because there were a lot of people that saw oh my goodness i didn't see anything negative about that at all by the end of it, you got the kid walking upright, and you know we can say it's not about symptoms, and that it's not about you know your back pain, your neck pain. It's about your life, and that's true. But to that kid, yeah. he doesn't care anything about the subluxation. He doesn't care anything about his own innate potential. He wants to be able to stand up straight and walk again. He wants to be able to run. He wants to be able to play sports. To him, that's what life is, and that's why a lot of people show up in your office. Like I would love to say they all walked in because they want their subluxations gone. But yep. that's not usually how it works. They want their headaches gone and they want their backaches gone and this and that, because that's what the public has perceived. And the, a big part of the profession has pushed so hard for is and wanted so badly uh, to be the redheaded stepchildren of medicine. And then they got it. Yes. And now we go, wait a minute. That's not at all what we're what we're going for. We want something that's that, that people understand a broader picture of this. Um, you know, and, and that's, you know, and, and that's far, part of bringing new patients in is understanding that when you, when you put something out, I made this mistake when I first started, man, I, I listened, I watched, I don't know, probably like Matt loop was actually in my class in school when he got transferred up from, uh, Atlanta, uh, he was, it was in my graduating class and, you know, I, I didn't know him well. Cause there was, you know, all these graduate or new people that came into the school, but I watched one of his videos a couple of years later after I graduated and, you know, video was a thing. And I said, man, that's great. You know, he was like making all these friends on MySpace and getting it like social media. And I was MySpace, like, wow, baby. I thought that was like a kid toy, you know, like that's, you know, like, like college kids use or whatever. And, and it kind of was, and it kind of is, you know, but at the same time, so I pick up this like old video camera and I, I take video of myself and it is absolutely brutal. Like I wish the internet <laughs> would lose it, you know, like it's so, so terrible. Like it's all glitchy and weird and like audio is terrible. Now, you know, we're, we're in such an age today where, you know, we have these fancy microphones and, and nice cameras and, and things come through nice and clear and pretty and we can put a message out that's nice. But the thing is, is that, you know, when you put something out on video, just understand that it's out there forever. So if you're going to do it, like, you know, to me, it's worth the extra couple bucks to, to buy the nice camera and, and put a, a nice, a new, a, a mic on. And so it's not echoing through the room and make it look prettier. Now I might be a little bit uh, too far with it because I like things to look good and sound good. Uh, but that's one thing with video is make it sound good because people can get over bad looks if it sounds crappy and they can't hear you, forget it. It's done. That's absolutely right. And I think it's really important to know that if you are wanting to market a product or a service, if you're wanting to market a service like chiropractic, you want it to have, you want to put it, your best face forward. You want to have context. You want things to be clean. I mean, just like your office, you don't want your office to be a disheveled mess. You don't want it to be, you know, people walk in and it smells like, you know, a three week old ham sandwich whenever they step in your adjusting area. I mean, you don't want dirty that. floors everywhere. Not a good idea. Exactly. Now for us, we can mop our floors every day. And by the end of the day, they're dirty. We've got concrete floors and I mean, they get dirty quick, but you got to stay up with it. The point being you've, if you're going to market, you're going to do video, do it right. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. And that includes not just the content, but the structure of that video as well. You know, they're not that expensive to get a good microphone. Most cameras have excellent video recording capabilities. Get you a gimbal 
for your phone or even pony up the dough for a GoPro and do it upright. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. And then make sure your content, if you're going to use video to draw people in, make sure your content is engaging. Yes. Uh, like you said, having no just a talking, talking head is heads, it gets boring, man. Nobody wants to watch that day after day. But I think people want to see like one of my favorite guys to watch online is Casey Neistat. I think I may have mentioned him before, but man, you watch a video from him. I mean, it, literally, and it's he's always doing something fun. You know, he has like these electric skateboards and 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 drones and all this crazy stuff. And I mean, I, I'll watch a nine minute video of the guy going to get a coffee. Like, I, it's not that it shouldn't be that entertaining, but his like video skills and all the things that he along the way i mean it, it just makes it entertaining so it, people draws have to, you in. yeah man and people have to get to know you and like you and trust you to do business with you so that's one thing you know obviously if you're going to be using social media you're going to be using good video and, and, and using video and, at all um you can't be afraid to open up some doors man you can't be afraid yet you don't want to be a stiff you know so one thing i i've heard um uh, Dr. Zeno talk about was he said, man, I don't like to do takes. I do the first one and that's it because that's usually the best one. I don't, I don't want to have many, many times of, you know, like ah, I messed up there, start over, like just be raw with it. Just go with it. Make it happen. Or just cause... edit it out in post. Indeed. Yeah, edit that out in post. Let's <laughs> yes. edit that in post. Yes, well, indeed. Well, and I think that that ties into a really important principle that, that you're alluding to is authenticity. Be yes. authentic with what you put out there. You know, um, social media is the way to go as far as marketing goes. And I can't help but wonder what comes after. That's something that I've, I've been thinking about. And you probably know Tristan Schaub with uh, Cairo Sushi. Yes. Um, that's a conversation I hope to have with him here pretty soon. I need to holler at me, talk to him in a while. But, you know, what comes after social media? But we can worry about that when, when that day comes. But in the meantime, whenever you market, be authentic because people can smell a phony a mile away. You know, whenever right. I moved into the practice or moved into the location that I'm in now, you know, I painted my walls orange and gray. Those are the colors I like. You know, I've I'm usually wear jeans and a T-shirt to work. And during the summer, I wear shorts and flip flops, man. Mm -hmm. um, I've got the music going I want to listen to. Some days it's folk. Some days it's bluegrass. Some days it's Slayer and Pantera. But I'm authentic. I'm real with my people. Yeah, I just don't and see you as a jazz guy. Nah, not a jazz guy. Maybe, no. maybe whenever I'm, you know, winding down with a lady and we turn the lights down low. But with the patients, now nah, we ain't rolling that way. That's another story for another time. Correct. You know, another topic for another day. <laughs> but if that's the way I'm going to be in my practice, then my marketing should reflect that as well. Mm -hmm. I don't want my marketing to involve a white coat and a stethoscope. I don't want my marketing to involve a shirt and a tie. You know, if, if I'm, you know, freewheeling and easy going in the office, still professional, make no mistake, and still very serious about what I do, but everything needs to be cohesive. And in doing so, what you do is, is you build a brand. You build a brand around your brand identity, and your brand identity has to be an authentic expression of who you are. Mm -hmm. So whatever type of marketing you choose to do and that you engage in, you have to be authentic. You have to come from a place where you're being real with the people you're marketing to and do so in a way that draws their attention, that grabs their attention. And the odds are is if you're doing something that you think is cool and you think is interesting – other people will probably think that too, unless you're just really weird. So, <laughs> and you're still going to get really weird people that will come in. I have seen that every too. Every day, it doesn't every matter. And and even if you're really really weird yourself, you're going to draw those same kind of weirdos into you. That's okay. I mean, that's who you're drawing in, man. That's that magnet you put out. That's I remember cool. a guy. We in, all weirdos. Oh, without a doubt, and that's okay. I mean, there was a guy in school. I remember hearing him say like. You know, you can either do this or, you know, eat food or do this. Like what's more important is nerve or food. And I was like, holy cow, that guy is a little further than I would like say to somebody like that takes some nerve to actually say that to somebody. Um, oh, while, yeah. And while it's true, I mean, obviously you you can live without a cheese sandwich, but you have no nerve impulse. That's done. You're dead, you know, which so I get what he's saying. But, man, I thought that that dude is like, and he did activator all the time. I thought, man, there is no way like that's, I just don't understand how this is going to work. You know, like how, so anyway, at the end of the day, um, yeah, authenticity, you got to be authentic. If you're not, you're not, you can't be somebody else. You got to be the best version of you possible. Um, one thing we do, man, is, is, um, when uh, we have people give reviews is we give them like a coffee card to Starbucks or any local, coffee place and, and everybody loves to go get a coffee if, if they don't they know somebody that'll take it the wife or husband or whatever and uh 
I think that's a fantastic way to, you know, ask them, Hey, if, if they're, if they like the service they're getting, would they mind doing a quick review? And you can ask them to do that right there in the office on their phone. It's super simple, super easy. And, uh, what'll happen is, is you start getting lots and lots of reviews online. When people start Googling, you know, and finding chiropractor near me, they see the guy with 13 reviews or 87 reviews. I mean, it's kind of a no brainer. Well, and Google likes reviews too. At least the last time I checked, I don't Absolutely. know if they changed that or not, but they like reviews. The more reviews that have, you have, the further up in the search rankings that you'll be. Whenever people search for a generic chiropractor, right? You know, if they're if they're just searching for you, they will find you. You'll show up at the top or near the top. But if they're just searching for chiropractic in general, if you have reviews, that goes a long way to driving you near the top of the search results. And the best way to get reviews is to ask for them. That's just it. ask. Just ask. And. And it doesn't have to be weird. It doesn't have to be, okay, so, Miss Peggy, since I just adjusted your spine, I was wondering, would you mind, if you don't mind, if it's not too much trouble, you think you could please maybe get on Google on your phone and do a review? Now, I know, I know it's kind of hard. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Just say, hey, we've been taking care of you for a while. We love taking care of you. One thing we're trying to do is increase our visibility online. Would you mind leaving us a quick five-star review on Google? Right. That's it. It's easy. Piece of cake. No Super big deal. Easy. A lot of you times I'll, I'll even that. give them the, re, the, the, the gift card right then. Just say, here it is. And it's funny because then they, they're like, then, then they feel obligated to do it. Right. They, they don't, they're like, yeah. they don't do it two weeks from then. They just, they're like, okay, let me pull out my phone and do it real quick. It makes it super simple, but that's as it. a, as a quick aside, those of you that are listening, you might check and make sure, um, in accordance with your state laws that you won't be violating anything by giving someone a gift in exchange for something else, just, just to cover your butt and mine here. So yeah, you guys just check that out, but more than likely it'll be fine. Um, that yeah. being said though, what you're talking about with the gift card, that's, that's a night, that's a really good idea because we've been doing that just as a thank you whenever someone refers somebody in, right? If someone refers someone in and they have it on their referral sheet, you know, that they were referred by, you know, their aunt Margaret or whatever, then we'll send Aunt Margaret, a card, or the next time we see her, she comes in, we give her a card, she takes her over to the coffee shop and gets her a little $5 coffee. Yeah. So No, it's, it's a great great little thank you, man. It's it's cheap enough. I don't think most states have a problem with it, but again, I, it's, it's good you put that little disclaimer in there. Yeah, double check. You don't want to get in trouble. No, and no. And it's stupid some of the things you can get in trouble for. Is, you know, <laughs> right. Our friends who have filmed adjustments can attest. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Absolutely. Also, if you're going to get somebody to, to do a, a video testimonial, make sure they sign off that it's okay. You can use it in marketing or future marketing. Yes. Obviously, you don't want them out there being mad about it later. So they have them sign off on something. I'm sure you can find something on Google. It's it's not that hard to find a video testimonial. Um, what would you call that? Like a a waiver or a waiver. Form. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's the right word. Form, yeah. Perfect. Um, so, what are some things that you have done? I'm going to ask you a question. So what yeah. are some of the things that you have done in addition to the gift cards for your internal marketing that you have found to be effective? And what are some external things that you've done that you found uh, to be effective? That's a good question. Um, one thing that I I've been doing here lately is using Instagram um, I think it's fantastic to be able to have a, a platform that has a video and a picture. A couple things to think about, though. Instagram will only allow you to do a one minute video. So it's very important that if, if you're going to be wordy, that uh, you have a link to send them to on your bio to say, hey, here's my YouTube page that you can go check out. And it has the, the full, uh, you know, 15 minute video or whatever it is. Most people don't want to watch a 15 minute video though. I mean, you kind of have to get right to the point and make it quick and easy for them to understand. Um, make it as simple as you can. Anytime you're talking to, and you know, I don't want to sound uh, like you're downgrading this at all, but anytime you're talking to the public, you have to, you know, make it on a, a fifth grade or sixth grade level so that everybody gets it. And so that, that's, absolutely that's important that people understand that. Um, uh, most people don't know what, um, ipsilateral strabismus is or you know <laughs> things like this right like you have to you got to use words that people understand right so yep. um but I, I like Instagram because it's it's simple, but you can also put videos. And one thing that we do is we add pictures of the family and events that we're doing so that people get to know us. You know, it's not just it's not all just business, business, business. It's 
Hey, this is who we are. You know, we we went to the father daughter dance last Friday night, you know, and that, I put up a picture of that and things that people get to know my family and they look forward to seeing these pictures and they, they get, they like us, you know, so it's, it's not yeah. just a, you know, and that's the whole point, you know, it's not a superficial, like it's an actual, they look forward to seeing the family pictures. There's so, a real affinity there. Yeah. It's, it's authenticity. Authenti- yep. That's it, man. Um, but yeah, so something I've been uh, doing is, is kind of helping some guys build that, that their brand, um, so the whole concept is very simple. We basically say, Lee, you have how many people are in your town? Uh, right now, I think with the last census, it was 28,000, I think, in Ardmore proper. In the county at large, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 60. Okay. And how many Instagram followers do you have right now? Do you know? I have no idea. I never mess with Instagram. You never I hardly with ever play with it, man. Okay. Well, so- I have one. And I post to it, but I don't really know how many followers I have, or I really don't even know who I'm following anymore. So <laughs> I love it. Well, here's the thing with Instagram is, is and, and they make it very simple that you can only follow um, 7,500 people. Now that's a very small fraction of your town and nobody's following 75. That's maxed out. That's all you can do. But here's the neat part is you can take everybody in your town and we can, we can follow them. And then what what will happen is, is they will um, after a few days, if they're not following you back, it unfollows them. So you kind of can get an introduction. It'll send it like a quick message and say, hey, Dr. Lee here, chiropractor and, you know, basically add add more. How do you say it? Ardmore. Ardmore. Okay. Uh, Chiropractor and Ardmore. We uh, we offer a membership type of practice. And then at the end of it, if if they say, hey, you know what? I've been looking for a chiropractor and you can start the conversation that way. So the neat part about it is, is the way we do it. You're pretty much hands off. All you have to do is, is tech, you know, answer your your messages and uh, something somebody likes something or wants to talk to you more then they send you a message. It's very simple, um, but it's a great way to get an introduction out into the community and at least let people know you exist. And, you know, BJ was famous for saying, you know, uh, early to bed, early to rise, work like and advertise. Right. We're going to leave yes. that out. This might be PG or, you know, we want to keep this as clean as possible here. Um, Absolutely. But you guys know the phrase. Uh, but I think it's a very, very important that you do advertise because there's, you know, even though you think everybody in town knows who you are, I guarantee they don't. You know, we're, we meet new people after we've been in practice here since 2006 and we meet new people every week that are coming through the door that didn't know about us a week ago. So it's absolutely, you know, I think in your own mind, you're, you're, the, you're a boss, you know, but <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah. um, people don't know you, they don't know who you are. So it's, it's extremely important to kind of get your, your name out there. And, you know, that's Instagram and social media in general is, is fantastic for that. Um, I'm not a big fan of being on it personally all day long because, uh, I don't have time for it. You know, I bet, you know, I'll well, suck your dry, bro. Dude, you'll just, you'll be on it all day long. And that's, that's the yep. problem is it's a, it's an addiction, you know, but there's also like my wife who uh, has two, we have two kids at home that we're homeschooling. She's homeschool. Let's, let's back that up. She hears this. <laughs> she is homeschooling. I go to work now. Yeah, that being exactly. said, she works harder than I do without a question. Just don't let her know that. Um, we are secret, baby. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's something that she can do to kind of break the homeschool day up where she can pop on, take a look around. You know, she's giving me news all the time that I, you know, I can pick up on and say, okay, great. That's, you know, and then a lot of things that you see that are just a time waster, but oh, for the most part, it's nice to be able to uh, connect with old friends and this and that. But it, like you said, it'll, it'll kill your day if you do it all day long. So I, I try to stay off of that stuff personally for my business though. I want, I want my stuff out there in front of everybody all the time. Right. I mean, that's the whole Absolutely. idea with that. Uh, but so, yeah, if, if you guys are looking for some help with that, give me a buzz. I can help you with that. And I'd be happy to help you. Very cool. Well, you just described pretty much the same thing I'm doing with Facebook without the automated auto reply. But all of my external marketing is Facebook. Every bit of it has been Facebook. And are you I'm doing gonna... ads with that or are you doing uh, just adding friends randomly or what? I ran ads with Facebook. Um, I'm a member of, I'm going to go ahead and give a little plug to Cairo Sushi. They're a samurai program. I signed up for that uh, about a year and a half ago. And Tim Langley recommended it. And for me, if Tim recommended anything, I was going to try it. Yeah. I mean, the dude, he, he never steered me wrong. He always pointed me in the right direction. And it was, it was definitely worth the money to sign up with, with samurai. 
and what Tristan does is is he he gets you set up on a consistent ad basis on running Facebook ads, linking them back to your blog on your website and linking that back to a YouTube video, which then links back to your Facebook. He calls it a circle of life. And it's incredibly effective for driving traffic, for driving likes. And I did see an uptick. I did see a realization in people actually coming in through the door whenever I was doing that program like I should have been doing it. Like everything, you get comfortable, you get lazy, other things take priority. And, you know, it's not like I'm struggling and super duper hungry for new patients. So it's like, ah, no, nah, I don't think I'm going to do a little YouTube video this week. No, nah, I'm not going to do it this week. So I would do different ads and different things. And I'll still do boosted posts and other ads. But primarily, I would boost posts. I would run ads and do little video snippets and vignettes. And and it worked. And it was incredibly effective. So if you know how to do that and you can figure that out, go for it. Give it a try. It's worth the money to get that reach out there. If you want some help, the people at Cairo Sushi can help you out. They, they're, and they're not paying me to say any of this or anything. It's a product that I believe in, and, and it's a service that I think is worth the money. Tristan runs a really good ship over there, and he's a good dude. So, um, you know, but that's what, one that's thing, what I've done with Facebook. One thing I've seen is, is with Facebook ads, you have to be careful. Like what, one, if you, if you're not spending the right amount on the ad and the lead, you know, I think you can kind of get caught up in, in and you know, all these like lead generation type of things. Um, but you have to be able to put the ad out there that makes sense to people. And that, and that's kind of part of what we were talking about with the video stuff. Like, I think it, you know, that's going to be something, um, we just hired a video guy to come in and, and shoot video and be able to, um, put in some, like a nice ad. And that's the kind of the whole idea is say like, I want a nice ad that we can run consistently that will generate new people. And, um, I think the ad is itself can be, you can have one ad that just absolutely kills and does fantastic. And it's all about the demographics. There's all kinds of different things that have to be put into that ad to make it right though. If you don't have one little piece of that just right, it's the whole thing will fail. It, it does bad, you know, and you're going to spend a bunch of money and get frustrated real fast. And that's, I have done that with ads and then I've had some yes. ads that did just amazing. And you, you know, yes. that's usually the one I click on to see what's, what's right with it. And somehow it gets deleted and then I'm just mad, you know? So that's <laughs> usually the way that works. Um, been there a few times, but, uh, I think it's very important for people to understand that if you, if you're going to put out an ad, it has to be done, um, properly so that people get it and they they're like yes this makes sense and and i want to be part of that that's getting them in the door is half the battle man well and it's also it needs to be appealing to the right kind of people right you don't want to put something out there you know with a you know 30 something mom with you know two or more kids who maybe homeschools but she leans towards the crunchy side of things you know, she tends to be skeptical, but she likes to work out. And, you know, you can't target that particular ideal client and put out an ad that's going to appeal to 63 year old Susie who's on a limited income. Right. You know, right. There, there's nothing wrong with either of those demographics, but you have to have it, you know, crystal clear in your mind who it is you're wanting to appeal to. Right. And then you have to generate content and generate ads that appeal to that person. Right. So you have to think about what is it that they like to do? Where is it that they like to go? Who are the people they run with? What do they do in their free time? What does their value system look like? And you have to, and it's not that you're trying to manipulate anybody, but if that's the kind of person you really want to work with, you have to think, how can I appeal or make my service appeal to that individual? How can I make it appeal to that person? And then you put something out there that does appeal to them. And then if you already have people that you're taking care of that fit in that demographic, ask them, hey, I'm trying to get some more folks in the door. We're trying to grow, you know, and always trying to do better and serve more people. Would you mind taking a look at this and giving me your honest feedback on it? Yeah. I don't want you to be a yes head. I don't want you to glad hand me or pat me on the back. I want you to give me your honest feedback, whether it's good or bad, if this is something that you think is appealing. Absolutely. And if you like those, those are the people that you want to talk to to say, hey, if, if we're going to do a, a testimonial video or we're going to do a video with you, uh, if we can, you know, work on you while we're taking this video, those are the kind of videos that are going to attract those similar type of people as well. So if, if she's given yes. that video and she's saying, you know, you know, I've, I've had migraines and this and that, whatever it is, the, and you know, not that we're trying to advertise symptoms, but it is what it is. Um, 
those are the type of people you're going to get. You know, if you if you don't want to do fibromyalgia, by all means, please do not put fibromyalgia ads out there because people will show up with that. You know, and then yes, you're, then you're going to be, you know, personally, like it's not that I dislike that, but at the same time, I don't want sixty year old women in there with fibromyalgia all evening. You know, and that's they're yes. the, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but they are the absolute time suckers. That when you have a yes. busy practice, that you need to almost have a time for them because they're going to take all your time that day. They're going to take every last minute, and they're oh the sweetest gosh. people. They are. They're, Sweet. the, they're the nicest folks to deal with. They're they're wonderful. But my goodness, you could adjust five people by the time you get done working with one of them, yeah, and just get on that's the okay. table they sometimes. Need care too. And yeah, and we can provide care to them, and we should provide care to them, and we should love them just like we love Absolutely. everybody else. But just I don't understand that. Full of them. Yes. Just exactly. understand that. Like when you're going for that kind of thing, just know that there's certain conditions that come with that. So just, just understand Absolutely. that. Um, I do think it's also important to know that when you're, I think we touched on this last time, you know, I see a lot of people doing like, you know, like marketers that are on there that are saying, Hey, I can get you new patients. Well, be careful. I mean, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Cairo sushi guy, uh, drawing a blank on his name, right? Uh, Tristan, Tristan, Tristan yeah. is fantastic. He will take care of you, but, there are a lot of marketers out there that'll say, you know, I, you know, they put out $19 ads, you know, or $19 new patient thing. And, um, you're not going to be able to pay your ads when you get, when you get the bill that month with, you know, the 40 new patients you got at $19, isn't going to be able to pay your, your ads. Like it's, it's like, and they're, and none of them stayed, you know, cause they're all tire kickers at $19. So just understand yep. that, you know, until you get to a level where you're very, very financially secure, you know, if you wanted to do that, which you won't, uh, you know, then you might be able to securely do that, but you won't even want to do that at that point. It's not worth the time or the effort it takes. Exactly. So, um, you know, ex- external, you know, that's, I think external at this point, you know, I think we've discussed too. uh, phone book ads are a waste of time. You know, I, I got no, one the other day. Money. Absolutely. I, I remember the first one uh, that I got and I, I was going to put an ad in and the guy put in a, a, a draft or whatever. And I was kind of looking at it and I just kind of decided against it. Well, then it showed up in the phone book and then I got a bill for it and I had to like fight him and be like, dude, I'm not, put, I'm not paying you for this. You don't even have my yeah. number in there. Right. Like the number is the wrong number. Like you're out of your mind, you know? So that uh, phone books are a waste of money. I, I'm not a big fan of billboards cause you can't, there's just no point spending that kind of money when there's Facebook and Instagram and, and all these like really good media it's way types. more effective. It's engaging. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I don't want to look at a picture of my future doctor, my, you know, whatever, whoever he is or, or attorney. And, you know, like I was at, at the, the grocery sh- uh, store the other day and I'm getting ready to, to run my card and I look down and, you know, there's like, I don't know if you guys have them there, but there's like these stands that people like used to write a check on. So yeah, like, yeah. so you'd like it. So they had ads on there and I thought, man, if I ever put my ad on here, I hope somebody shoots me because that, <laughs> that is the last place I want to put an ad. Like, like yeah. that's the last place I'm going to go look for the chiropractor is, is at schnooks or, or the local grocery store. Forget it. Well, if, I'm ever, if I'm ever up your direction and I see your ad on one of those, <laughs> I'll come find you. Baby. Please do. Yes, please do. Yeah, just, I'll, I'll be like, Andrew, let me just let me just give you the old yellow treatment, man. Let me <laughs> give you the old yellow treatment right now, baby. <laughs> right, going to take it. In. That's hey, but, please do. So we we've talked a little bit about social media. We've talked about external marketing, and we talked about going out and shaking hands and kissing babies. And what do you think for the new doctor getting out there in practice? And I think I think we talked about this a few weeks ago. Um, what type of event should they look for? What, in your mind, what do you think is the most effective? Hmm. Well, um, that's a tough question, man. Cause I'm not sure an event I've not done events in a long, long time. Um, me either. That's why I asked you. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I think anywhere you can get out and be social with people. Like I like to, anywhere we go, man, I mean, in a summer night, we, we might go to the local ice cream shop and, you know, talk to people. I was at the grocery store picking up, um, uh, let's see, uh, some, uh, <laughs> I can't talk tonight, man. Um, some meat the other night for my wife. And I, I was talking to the lady and we were just had a conversation. And I mean, that was, that was the best way, man, is just getting out and meeting people. And that's, that's, what's going to bring people in. You know, I always try to, you know, especially when I was young in practice, I always had cards that I'd give people. You know, and yeah. I bought a ton of cards and, and now, you know, I bought like, and it was funny, I, I got them from this company called Got Print and I'm pretty sure they still print like a 
five thousand cards for like forty bucks or something. It's something ridiculously cheap, and I still have these pictures of me that of ten years ago, and they're like people see them now, and they're like, "Who's the little kid on the guard? Who's that guy?" You know, like <laughs> so people give me grief about it all the time. But you know, I have all these. I have five thousand cards. You know, I probably gave out a fifth of them. You know, so I got all these cards left, um, and I don't even care them anymore, man. It's it's just something I just ah, it's you know low best chiropractic. Give me a call sometime, man, or you know, and, and people give end me up finding me. Yeah, I mean, people find yeah. it now. I mean, cards are, you know, some of that stuff's kind of old school stuff that you just kind of, kind of, we kind of laugh about now, but it's, it's, Mm -hmm. you know, um, events though, you know, I think anything you enjoy doing, you know, if you're out flying your drone or or riding your bike or whatever it is you like to do, I mean, those are the kind of people that are going to be your people anyway. So, you know, kind of like-minded folks. So I think that's, uh, probably the people you ought to get to know the people at your church. You know, if there's church events that you should definitely go be a part of, I mean, you know, donate your time, have fun, man. That's the important part that people see that you're, you're not just there cause you're, you're there to work. Like you're, you're there having a good time, be yourself. You know, Absolutely. and I think that's people like you for who you are. They're not, they don't like you for what you do. That's that. Yeah. They like you for who you are. Now the kind of people that like you for what you do for them, those are what we call sociopaths and they're not the kind of people you <laughs> want to be around anyway. Yes, indeed. But, but the people that like you for who you are, that that's where you're going to build your tribe. And you know, for, for the new grad that maybe you're moving to a new town or maybe you're, you know, picking up and starting over in another city or state, what you can do is, is there's a lot of resources out there to find those groups and those people and to find those events. Your chamber of commerce can be a huge benefit. That doesn't mean you have to be a member of your chamber though. I was a member of our chamber of commerce from the beginning. It was like dues were 450 bucks a year and they would list you on their on the Chamber of Commerce website, and you'd get a little banner and their little mail out that they would send to new people that move into town and what have you. And you got plugged into some of the Chamber events, and they had some things going on like business after hours where your business could host, you know, the the Chamber and the other people, and they'd come into your business, and you could visit with them and tell them about what your business was about and what you did, and um, that that all was good. But what it was was networking more than anything else. Yeah, you're meeting other and professionals. The, That's you're not exactly meeting, you're not you're meeting, meeting the house people. mom with the the two kids that are screaming all day. That you know that yeah. that's those are the people you want to get to meet. Yeah, you, you're building awareness and doing those things, you know, in in the minds of other people, and that may lead to to someone coming in. It may not. It's not going to lead and generate a ton of really good, high quality leads. It's just, it's just not going to happen. But it might create some some front of mind awareness. But the chamber membership this last year, I didn't renew it. And I got to think what benefit has this really been for me in my practice? Yeah. And there were some other local initiatives that the chamber opposed that I supported. So for me, it was kind of a personal decision as well to discontinue my support of the chamber. But check with your chamber of commerce, see what's going on, see if there's a young professionals group. Um, there's a young professionals group that functions in our community, which I'm no longer a part of, um, not for any real reason. I just got busy and had other things going on, but, um, they would do school book drives at the, uh, you know, for back to school season, they would stuff the backpacks. They would do a, a pre- Christmas gift drive for underprivileged children. And then they would help wrap presents for angel tree. Um, they would also have, um, after hours mixers at different places, not chiropractic mixers, but mixers, you know, where you get together and meet people, social events, those kinds of things can get you plugged in and can lead you to the other groups and the other things that you want to be a part of Mm -hmm. so that you can start to generate patients. So that's another strategy that you can employ whenever, whenever you do move into a new community or into a new town. Yeah, absolutely. There's also things that you could do. uh, You know, some people, I'm not saying go big or you have to go this big, but there's country clubs you could go be a part of and, and even be a, like some of them even have like social memberships where you can, you know, go eat dinner and and meet people and, and you don't have to be a full fledged, you know, all in $600 a month country club member, but it might be a couple hundred bucks where you can at least network and, and get to know some people, you know, and those are people who have money and are willing to spend money on themselves, which is, Absolutely. Absolutely fine. You know, so, you know, obviously uh, that's important that you get to know. Um, another thing I can kind of say I have seen that there's a big problem with is confidence when people get out of school. And that's, yes. that's such a, a problem and an issue because 
Um, you know, and I think it all starts with the, um, you know, when you're in school and you're walking past the gymnasium and you see the standard process gym and the biofreeze lab and the laser this and this and that, and you get out of school and you don't even know what you're doing, you know, and that's, and so it's, it's a ill foul uh, confidence that you were destined to get because you're completely lost basically when you get out of school. And that's, that's such an issue. And, uh, you know, for, for things like that, I mean, the membership group is fantastic because I've seen some folks in there that just got started and, and are already, you know, kicking butt. I mean, and this is, this was from years ago that they never got the fun times of trying to figure out how to have dinner that night or, you know, trying to, you yeah. know, the, the struggle because they just kind of walked right into something that was, Oh, let's do it this way. And it makes sense. Um, well, and that's the value in it. Just like you said, bro, is that, you know, we're here to pick each other up. We're here to mentor each other. And yeah, we had to suffer through that, but if we can help that next generation of chiropractors get to that level of success that you're at and the level of success that I'm at without having to experience those scary times, I mean, there's value in those times oh because it helps you appreciate what you have. There's a lot of clarity you know, that happens for sure. <laughs> absolutely. But if we can help one another, and I think that's a problem in the profession, man, is is if you don't practice Gonstead, well, you're not a real chiropractor. If you don't practice upper cervical, you're not a real chiropractor. If you know, you're know you not all cash, you're not a real chiropractor. If you bill any insurance at all, you're not a real chiropractor. We, we build these artificial walls around ourselves and – you know, we don't really help each other. You know, chiropractors eat their young. They, yeah, so true. And that's that's a that's a cycle that in the membership group we're trying to break. Now we might get crosswise with each other every now and again. That happens. I <laughs> mean, does. that's human nature. It Things does. are going to happen. But by and large, you know, we love each other. We need to continue to support each other and do what we can to help each other achieve those levels of success. And that starts with building confidence in those young docs that are getting out of school and showing them that you can be a principal chiropractor. You can be a straight chiropractor. I didn't even know what either one of those meant. I, I didn't know what either one of those meant when I got out of school. Principled what? I didn't. I didn't yeah, even, neither did I. You know, and, and you know, it can mean different things to different people. Obviously, uh, there's different I, schools yeah. of camp we've kind of kind of touched on, but you know, let's let's walk through that real quick because somebody new to to this podcast, maybe even or just new in the profession, they hear this, they say, "Principled chiropractor." What does that mean? Well, in school, you're probably going to hear at some point, whether it's at the as a source of ridicule or as a source of reverence, that there are 33 principles um, of chiropractic. And those 33 principles are really universal principles. They're not really – and I'm not going to go into those because we're, we're running a little low on time. I'm trying to keep an eye on the time on this one. But those 33 principles are really universal principles. It's only the last one or two that, that are unique to chiropractic in and of itself. And a principled chiropractic office functions only as an extension of service to those principles. It's not in service to yourself. It's in service to your fellow man through those principles in a moral and ethical way. So in order to accomplish the goal of you know, finding nerve interference or removing nerve interference, you know, which we call subluxation and we remove it through the adjustment. That's the service that a chiropractor offers. Now, as people, we may care about our patients. You know, I started lifting weights and I changed my diet drastically back in the end of 2017, you know, cause I wanted to become the Southern Oklahoma incredible Hulk. That's what I wanted to do. I want to get big. I want to get strong. So my patients noticed that, Hey, his physique's changing. And they're going to ask me, what are you eating now? Well, this is what my diet looks like. What kind of weightlifting are you doing? I've got other, you know, practice members who lift weights and they ask me, what am I doing? So I'll tell them oh, I'm back. I'm doing this movement here and I'm doing it like this. And, you know, try doing it this way and do 30 reps and then drop down, you know, your reps to 15 and increase your weight. Now I'm not mixing in that part. What mixing is, is it's whenever you mix anything that falls outside of the auspices of those 33 principles into chiropractic as a treatment modality or for some other end or towards some other end of addressing vertebral subluxation through the adjustment. So things like nutrition, nutritional counseling, um, or, you know, exercise physiology or, or what is it called? Uh, physical therapy, um, doing electrical stem or ultrasound or scraping people's feet with spoons or that's grassing technique for those of you wondering what that little <laughs> dude that is. But, 
you know, all of those things, they fall outside of chiropractic. They are not chiropractic. Chiropractic is the detection and correction of vertebral subluxation. That is the principle of chiropractic. And that's what a principal chiropractor does. But to tell someone what my weightlifting regimen is or what I'm eating, that's not a violation of that principle. That's just being a human and sharing information with them. Now, if I tell them, well, you need to eat three potatoes every meal, then the potato becomes a pill. Then the potato is a treatment to affect something, and then I'm doing something other than chiropractic. All that to say, there are those in our profession who have espoused the idea that you cannot be successful as a principled chiropractor. If all all you do is detect subluxations and correct subluxations, you will starve to death. You will grow broke. When I transitioned to membership, I remember being unsure of myself. I lack that confidence that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I got in different chiropractic groups I was a part of on Facebook at the time. And I said, well, what about this idea of, you know, um, paying just one flat monthly fee, but we come in as often as they need to. And people got nasty with me about it, dude. They used to call it UCAP. It was unlimited chiropractic care to fix the fee. Yeah, Ugly. dude, I mean, I got some I mean, I got some nasty private messages too. People like, "Well, if you're going to do that, you might as well just kill yourself now instead of waiting until you're broke to do it." And I mean, crap like that, you're going to starve <laughs> to death. There's no way Take you're gonna your be license successful. away. Yeah, yeah, you'll lose your license, or you're making us all look bad by doing this. You're devaluing the profession. Now, that's a conversation we ought to have sometimes about yeah. value. Oh yeah. But but people are saying you can't be successful doing it. You can't be successful. There's no way being a principal guy. I was at a continuing ed seminar once and it was over PI because that's that was the soonest I could get. There were the last hours, last opportunity for hours I could get before I had to renew my license. So I had to take it. I'm way more careful now. <laughs> but it was over PI and this guy was saying, you know, you have to do PI. You can make a lot of money doing PI. And of course, he has a PI program to sell. Sure. And he's saying, if you think that you can be successful in practice by just detecting and correcting vertebral subluxations, well, there's just no way. That's impossible. So me being the guy that I am, I couldn't help myself. I just had to raise my hand and he said yes. And I said, yeah, that's all I do. And that's all I've done for the last five years. And I'm pretty successful. Yeah, I bet he, he said, loved well, you. Yeah. And he said, well, I just don't see how that could be the case. And he just kept on going. Well, you, you still, you, that's the exception of the rule. And, but you can be successful in this model. <laughs> so you pull and, out the quick books and you go, here it is. And he goes, huh, that's neat. Yeah. Wow. And the, the people that send me the nasty messages, one of the best things that ever happened is after I bought my Mercedes, um, I took a picture of it and I sent it to him on uh, Facebook and I said, <laughs> Hey, I'm going broke over here, man. And um, I'm sending you this post from my Mercedes. And bought my house with the pool. And, and the, the dude's not even practicing now. I don't even know what he's doing. But he finally blocked me. But, <laughs> yeah, I, I had to rub it in a little bit. No, for but, sure. For sure. But anyway, I digress. You can be successful in this model. So, guys, if you're listening to this and you're discouraged, keep the faith. Reach out to me. Reach out to, to Andrew. Reach out to anybody that's in that group. Reach out to, you know, Jay Corson or Damian Casulo. You know, all of these cats. You know, J.J. Doriot. We're all here to help you. We've been there. We know how awful it can be. And you're not by yourself. You're not alone. You don't have to be alone. And we're here and we stand ready to help you any way we can. So reach out. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that confidence thing comes in. So and I think that's part of that is is with experience. Obviously, you can't just walk out of school and have that. But when you walk out of a school like I did, that was based on physical therapy. And um, obviously, we had adjusting classes, but it was basically around physical therapy. Um, I don't understand how somebody could get out and be successful to be quite honest or have confidence. So part of that is it's getting into, you know, and, and I'm not like a big, you know, you have to read your green books every day. I'm more about read your Bible every day. But, um, yeah. if, if you get into to some of the green book stuff and start reading it, you'll, you'll see, man, this is, it, it so goes in with, you know, kind of a, a I would say almost a biblical standpoint for, for me, it does. I know a lot of guys like to separate that, but for me it does because, you know, I look at it and say, listen, you know, basically that power that runs you, um, it's either there or it's not, you know, and that's, that's really what, what it really boils down to is you can't electrically charge it to come back with a, with a stem machine or an ultrasound. I mean, that just, you know, if, if insurance didn't pay for that stuff, people would have it out of their business the next day. And they'd yeah, figure out how to absolutely. run their practices, you know, uh, with adjustments. I mean, that's, you know, and I'm honestly, I'm not against some of these things that people do. And I know that sounds, you know, a little bit far, but I'm not as st- like, I guess, r- would that be the right word? Um, rigid, rigid, rigid as other yeah. people yeah. maybe were to say, you know, um, you know, you, 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 
I'm not a big fan of a lot of things outside of uh, adjusting, but I think there's certain certain things like BJ talked about with like the three T's of you know the toxicity, the thoughts, and the trauma. And we we really work well with the trauma stuff, obviously. And I don't mean like auto accidents or falls. I mean like working on the computer all day or playing on your cell phone and and your chronic you know, that trauma. chronic trauma. I mean, we are fantastic with that. That's all, we're great. Um, you know, some of the toxicity things, though. Obviously, you know, like somebody walks in and they they smoke every day. I'm gonna say, quit freaking smoking. You know, like I had a lady yeah. a couple of weeks ago that said, "Well, I just can't afford to come in regularly." I said, "You smell like smoke. Do you smoke?" Yeah, and I said, "How do you, how much do you smoke?" Oh, like a pack a day. I said, "What's a pack cost you? Like five or six bucks?" Yeah, and I said, "Well, <laughs> then quit doing There's that. Right come there. in. Yeah. Like, I mean, just trade that out, you know." But but the funny thing is, is like as a new grad, I wouldn't have told somebody that. I'd just you know, well, okay, you know, like I, I wouldn't have told. Now I'm like, well, quit freaking smoking, moron, you know, like because <laughs> that's yeah. how it is now. Like I'm, I'm well, like, and, I don't have time for this. If you don't want to be healthy, get out. Somebody else wants that, the room right now. Like. It, that shuts, but like you said, it only comes with experience. Experience has to build that backbone. Experience has to build that certainty and that confidence and that ability to confront those those naysayers or those people that make excuses. Now, if someone genuinely can't afford it, that's one thing. But for if someone isn't making it a priority, and it's obvious they're not making their health a priority, if they're going to continue to slowly kill themselves with tobacco, well, there you go. What can you do? It's next Right. Next. Exactly. And there's plenty in the waiting room waiting to get the room. I mean, that's that's the beautiful part, man, is is it at some point and it takes some time. It takes some patience on your part, like physical patience, not just patience, but people coming in the office. Yeah. I mean, you know, their patience until they sign up and then they're members. Right. So that's the big thing with us that's is, it. you know, we want to have them. Um, we want to have them understand what it is they're doing. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I'm going to take the time with them in the beginning to to and the confidence to tell them, hey, if you're smoking, you're not going to be get, you're not going to get healthy. I mean, you just won't. Your body doesn't work like that. You can't smoke and at the same time get healthy. It just doesn't go Absolutely. together. So stop being a moron. Be like, well, here I am, you know, finding the subluxation, making an adjustment to correct that subluxation. You're going to go and put something into your body to make to lower your ex- your internal resistance to those external invasive forces and bring you back to that state of subluxation quicker. Yeah. So you want to undo the work I just did. If if I'm painting your house and I'm painting your room blue, you're walking in right behind me with a roller and painting it red. Yeah, so exactly. So that don't make any sense at all. So quit no. painting the room red. Yeah, and having that confidence to tell them that that that's part of that confidence thing. And and as I spoke with students last time I was at Logan, that was kind of their big thing is saying, I don't think I have the confidence to open up my own practice. And that's mm-hmm. and it's sad that school – you know, steals 150 or $180,000 from you, but you don't feel like you're really prepared to open up. And that, that's, that's just pathetic to me, but it's not school's fault. School does its job to get you through the boards. It's your, your responsibility. And this is a problem I really had for a long time is I kind of wanted to blame the school for me not being as successful as I needed to be. And likewise, um, you're singing my song, brother, dude, it's, it sucks. Cause you, you really want to not put the blame back on you ever. Right. Like we always, yep. somebody else did that. It wasn't me, but, um, you know, that was the big thing for me is like school didn't prepare me at school schools. Well, it has nothing to suck it up. It's not the school. It's you. You're the yep. reason you're not where you need to be. And if that's, you know, if you're hearing this and that's, you're, you're hearing this and you're going, man, I don't want to talk. I don't even want to listen to this anymore. Well, I'm talking to you then because that's. That's how it is. Absolutely. You know, you're the one that needs to hear it. Yeah. And that's, that's brutal to hear sometimes. Nobody wants to hear it, but you know, you gotta, you gotta open up those green books, listen to the old Reggie, listen to, um, Sid, listen to, um, I don't know, pick, pick you out some man, BJ Palmer, BJ Palmer put on some great talks that you can find online, you know, and, and you can, uh, the DE talks, you can go to the DE website and find all kinds of fantastic talks from, Several different guys that are just awesome. Some of them are free. Some of them you have to pay for. But I'm telling you, folks, they are worth the money to buy them. Yeah. It is worth it to pay the money to get those talks so you can listen to them in stunning high definition. And if you are um, still in school, you could use that Monopoly money that you have and buy them up because that's what it feels like at the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, it's shown sure enough. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I know I'm I'm going to have to wrap it up here pretty yep, soon. Absolutely. But I want to add a couple of suggestions to the book list that you just gave. One has to do with sort of what we were just talking about, the idea of taking responsibility 
for yourself and not blaming the school, and that would be Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. That's an amazing book. It's an excellent book on leadership in general, but it has more to do with learning how to own your own shortcomings and overcome them. Hmm. It's an excellent book, and I highly recommend it. Another one for marketing in general, you know, you heard us talk a little bit about ideal client and marketing to that client. There's an excellent book by Michael Port called Book Yourself Solid mm-hmm. that covers a lot of those principles. And you can you can get those books and you can work through work through what he has in that book. And it'll give you a great idea on how to market your practice, whether you're getting started in practice or whether you are um, whether you've, you're established and you've been established for a while. That's the book that I started using about three years ago to help me fine tune and hone in my marketing. And the uh, Kairo Sushi Samurai just took it to the next level for me, anyway. But that book, Yourself Solid, is is an outstanding resource, and it was incredibly effective in helping me figure out who I wanted to market to, who I wanted to get in my office, and how to go about doing it. And it's it's definitely worth your time. Absolutely, Lee. Thanks for being on again tonight. We'll see you next week. Appreciate you, brother. Have a good one.